Hey guys, my name is Arthur and today I would like to share with you my checklist for a successful NFT drop. I would like just to share with you some technical aspects of your NFT project. So watch this video if you are a developer or if you're gonna talk to some developer about developing your NFT a smart contract. I will not cover any stuff about the mechanics and marketing about the NFT project. And now let's get to the checklist. So the first thing that I think it's very important for you to clarify is on which network you would like to launch your NFT project. So for example, you have to decide between Ethereum mainnet, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, Optimism, Harmony, and many other Ethereum compatible blockchains. Of course, you can also decide to go with the NFTs on the Bitcoin uh, or on Solana networks. Uh, but uh, I think these days, um, these NFTs are not as popular popular as the ones on the Ethereum compatible uh, blockchains. Um, so uh, just that you know, um, the mainnet is of course higher prestige because all the collections that are running on the mainnet, they are just uh, having higher volumes on the uh, on the marketplaces. Uh, but you have to remember that there, this also means higher fees. So for example, if you are deploying the smart contract, you have to pay way more than by going with Polygon or or any second layer or sidechain uh, solution. However, then with the mainnet is a bit easier onboarding because you don't have to tell your uh, potential customers that they have to switch the network, they have to um, exchange some ETH for the Polygon to cover gas fees. So it's way easier to onboard people to the mainnet. However, there are still uh, some solutions like gas stations that can make the onboarding boarding easier but uh, as a rule of thumb uh, mainnet is just more popular so it's easier to convince people to just use the mainnet however the side chains and second layer solutions like polygon binance smart chain are way more cheap so for example if you are uh, deploying your nft and you are sending the nft to your customers it may cost one or two cents so it's super cheap it's great for experiments it's great for gaming if you have a lot of nfts to produce uh, then i would consider going with polygon because this is a very very um popular network and you will not lose too much money on deploying your smart contracts and then distributing them to uh, your customers about the distribution and whitelists and all this stuff i will cover later in the checklist because this is also important so uh, we're gonna uh, then uh, then it's also relevant um, about going with the second layer solutions that you can put some of the metadata on chain which is super expensive on the mainnet but uh, on on the polygon and uh, and networks like that it's super super cheap um, there are a lot of uh, solutions so uh, i will not name all of them because probably uh, there are every day some new solution that should be ethereum killer or polygon killer or anything else so uh, but just that you know that there are a lot of networks that you can choose from uh, there are also grants uh, so it's also uh, it also makes sense to just do some research before you actually roll out your NFT and check what kind of options are there. Um, then there's an also very important um, decision about going with regular NFT, which is ERC721 and ERC1155. Uh, the main difference um, with uh, these um, tokens is that ERC721, it's just representing always one NFT. So for example, you can have a shield which is a special item and uh, then this item is a token id one and it can be uh, owned just by one person however if you have your c1155 uh, it's a bit different because then you can have actually the token with id one uh, which can be uh, for example shield as well but this shield can be owned by multiple address in the same time so um, your c1155 is more flexible it works pretty good with any um, gaming scenarios uh, but your c721 is just more popular and if the nft itself is very unique it's always one item then consider to go with your c721 uh, in terms of development there's no much difference uh, but you have to make this de decision before actually deploying your smart contracts 
end exactly like here there's a nice summary of that that you have one uh, kitten uh, that points to some certain token and with the ERC 1155 you have uh, one item that can be owned by several addresses and uh, for instance one address can have um, multiple copies of the same NFTs so it's also uh, important to actually remember. Uh, the next thing that you have to consider is uh, actually the NFT distribution. So usually the mechanic is that you have some kind of whitelist uh, or just somebody can purchase your NFT directly from the smart contract, just send some ETH and in return you can mint the NFT token. So it's again something very important on your checklist to just uh, talk with your developer about this or just think or about the logic uh, in your smart contract, how would you like to distribute your NFT? So it's really important to make that decision upfront because the later, of course, if the smart contract uh, is ready, it's deployed, it might be really, really hard to actually change the distribution um, method. And uh, the, the most uh, common uh, mechanics are whitelist. So basically you are whitelisting some address. Uh, for example, you can store that inside the memory of the smart contract which addresses are whitelisted you can go with the airdrop but this is more expensive option so for example if you are in the mainnet and you would like to airdrop some tokens to somebody <clears throat> then you have to cover the gas fees so uh, it's usually more popular on the second layer solutions like the polygon then you have the mint that basically you have to pay some ETH send it to the smart contract and then smart contract allows you to uh, mint the NFT and there's uh, also a free uh, mint. Um, I'm covering in details how to go with each of these options in, in my uh, Solidity Starter course. So if you are interested in that, just check the description of the video and there you should find the link and you can just uh, enroll to my course and just learn how to program all these options in smart contract and using Solidity smart contracts. Also, one article that I wrote is completely free. Just go to this URL and then you should just understand what are a different mechanics and the whitelisting in Solidity. Uh, because um, if you are just go with regular whitelisting that you store addresses inside the memory of the smart contracts, it's quite expensive. And here in this article, I'm showing you how you can make a cheap uh, whitelisting using um, signatures or Merkle trees. Uh, then there is a very important step um, before rolling out your NFT to actually prepare the metadata of the token. The metadata um, uh, is just a JSON file that describes the name of the token, the image, uh, some uh, traits, which you can see here. Here's the screenshot from the OpenSea. So for example, if you would like to show some more stuff, not only image, not only name of the token, you would like to show some traits, then you have to prepare the JSON file and you have to uh, link to that file from your smart contract. So it's also something that you have to consider before because you can go with centralized storage. So just put these JSONs to AWS or some server that you are own, or you can just uh, decide to go with decentralized storage, which is, I think, more uh, common way of doing NFT projects right, um, then you can put your JSON files into the IPFS or Arweave. Um, so then you have to consider, of course, uh, how to store this metadata. You have to remember that there are two types of metadata. One is relevant for the contract. So you can just uh, show some data about the contract, who is the owner, what are the royalties, and then you have the metadata specific to the token. And then, of course, you can decide whether the metadata can be changed or not. This is also very important to take um, to consider that because some projects actually uh, like PFPs, profile uh, pictures, uh, these are usually frozen so that it's not possible to change them over time. However, in the more complex NFT projects, if you would like to have some game item or some a piece of art, then sometimes the um, metadata can change and you also have to consider that in the 
design of the smart contract in your NFT. Um, then um, if you decide to go with the IPFS, uh, which is decentralized storage, if you have any questions about the IPFS, just let me know in the comments down below. I will try to shoot some video in upcoming days. But NFT storage is a great, great uh, application, a great service that actually simplifies uploading stuff into the IPFS. So if you are familiar with JavaScript or just regular HTTP requests, go to NFT storage because it's way, way easier if you would like to upload any stuff into the IPFS, which is usually the metadata for your NFT uh, project. Uh, then it's very important to take care of your contract ownership. Uh, so there is a library from Open Zeppelin for that, that whenever you are deploying the smart contract, you have to, um, you can store who is the owner of the contract. And that is very relevant because if you are going to the OpenSea or Blur or any other marketplaces, then these marketplaces are actually detecting who is the owner of the contract. So you can change some stuff like images, descriptions of your collection, even sometimes set the royalties. Um, and it's all very important to take care of this ownership and make sure that you have some functions that are allowing to re-announce the ownership of the contract. So for example, if I'm your, uh, if I'm uh, your developer, and I'm deploying the contract in your name, then I'm the owner of the contract. But it's really important that over time I can actually transfer my ownership into your hands. And this is something that has to be considered within the code of the Solidity smart contract. So it's very important to take care of that. Then there is a contract verification. So uh, verification is a strange word for that because sometimes people are thinking about this, about some kind of audit or tests about your contract, but contract verification actually means that your code is verified. So if somebody goes to the blockchain explorer, then actually you can see exactly what is the code of your smart contract. And that's the contract verification. And that's very important because it just makes your uh, project more transparent because you can just see what happens inside the smart contract. So you can see that there's nothing shady, that there's no way that somebody has backdoor to steal your tokens or burn your tokens without your permission. So it's very important to make sure that the code of your smart contract is actually visible in the blockchain explorer. Then there is a very important topic about the royalties, uh, because whenever you are setting up your NFT project, you can uh, decide about the royalties. And there's also one catch that um, in, in all the smart contracts that are deployed from November last year, you have to include some special library from OpenSea uh, that allows uh, OpenSea to basically enforce royalties uh, and block the marketplaces that are allowing you to basically post uh, to to bypass um, the royalties like blur or some other marketplaces. So it's very important to take care of uh, this logic in your smart contract. Because if you don't include these libraries from uh, registry filters, uh, then OpenSea will not allow you to set the royalties uh, uh, for that collection. And then you can basically lose a lot of money that are coming from um, every second secondary market sale. So it's very important to take care of the royalties and make sure that you have this logic in your smart contract. Um, then there's uh, also a mint page. So whenever you start your NFT project and you are charging if or you are organizing a free mint, then it's also important to actually take care that you have some front end that somebody can enter and basically connect the wallet and interact with your smart contract. I'm showing how to do this on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you are a React developer or JavaScript developer, you can find these materials for free on my YouTube channel. But it's really important to take care of this mint page and test it how this works with multiple wallets, whether you have some confirmations like success, um, like, like, like error handling. Uh, this is very important because whenever somebody wants to mint your NFT, you have to be sure that it's a very smooth process.
And uh, last but not least, you have to test and deploy your smart contract before to the testnet. This is very important because a lot of developers are making some changes to the smart contract, then deploying them to the production. And after some days, they are um, just noticing that, oh, the approval function for some reason is not working or the updating of the metadata is not working. And then once you re release your NFT project is probably too late and you are not able to upgrade the code of your smart contract at least by default how this is how it works so uh, please always make sure that you are testing and deploying your smart contract into the testnet and then you are doing some um, tests like try to mint try to sell try to transfer try to approve somebody just make sure that your nft works on the um, open sea by the way open sea supports testnets like sepolia girly uh, polygon mumbai so you can always make sure that your code is first deployed and then just try it on the testnet. Uh, and that's it for today. Uh, I hope that this video at least helped you uh, a bit. If you have any questions related to NFT development, smart contracts, reach out to me. Uh, here's the QR code you can scan and just get into the contact form. So if you would need any help with NFT project, I would uh, be here to help you. And of course, you can use a comment section down below below and don't forget to subscribe this channel.